Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page Channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. And enjoy the shows. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Florrie Hawkins, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes. You were the principal of the school. I'd like to talk to you if I could. All right. Would you care to meet me for a cocktail? There's a place called the Trader's Inn not far out of town. I could be there in an hour. All right. Miss Hawkins. Yes, Mr. Dollar. What changed your mind about talking to me? Well, I've, I've heard how you've gone about this. I mean... You forced Sheriff Doherty to let you in to see Roy Vickery. You defied Chief Hanley, and... Well, you don't seem frightened of any of them. Also, I... I suppose I'm a little sick of everything I've seen around here. Okay. I'll see you in an hour. I'll be there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the United Adjustment Bureau, 418 West 61st Street, New York City. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the racket in Clinton, Colorado. Expense account item nine, ten bucks, one dinner and four drinks for myself at the Trader's Inn, five miles outside of Clinton, where I waited for Flory Hawkins to appear. I'm sorry, I'm late. Oh, well, that's all right, Miss Hawkins. Uh, sit down, please. Would you, uh, would you like something to eat? A drink, maybe? No, thank you. I, uh, um... What's the matter? What is it? Oh, I can't help looking around. I hope no one sees us together. I mean, that would be difficult to explain. To explain to whom? Your friend, Sheriff Doherty, for one. Oh. Last night when you came to inquire about Julian Osborne, Sheriff Doherty called and told me to get rid of you and not answer any questions. Yeah, I guess that... Did he tell you what would have happened if I had stayed and you had answered some questions? No. I can imagine it would have been something that would have barred me from teaching for the rest of my life. <sighs> that sounds incredible. No, not too. I've been looking at your little town, Miss Hawkins. A school building can be made of paper, go up in smoke, a man can be killed, and none of the responsible people, the man who built the building, the fire chief, the sheriff, seem to care too much. You asked me about Julian Osborne. I knew he wrote your insurance company, or called them, and told them the school building wasn't right. He told me he was going to do it. I see. I knew it wasn't right, too. Everyone who worked in there, who worked on the building, knew it wasn't up to specifications. Then I'll contact some of those people. Well, that may be difficult. Julian Osborne spoke up, and he burned to death. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't speak now, or any of the others. I'm willing to speak about that building now. Now I'm willing to help you. I'd, I don't know about the others. Will Mr. Baines help you? Well, he's frightened of going up against Vickery and the others. But I think I can talk him into it. That would be two of us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Two people speaking out. And then there'd be others. Once it gets rolling, it won't stop. Unless I've missed my guess about the townspeople of Clinton. You seem to know a lot about people, Mr. Dollar. How to say what will stimulate them at the right time or make them speak out. I have to confess you did that to me. You looked hurt and bewildered last night when I insisted you leave me alone. I realize, you know, very deeply, I realize there could have been 1,400 pupils in that school when the fire broke out. I didn't sleep last night thinking of it. Yeah, I guess that was the only good feature of it. No children died. But as you say, Miss Hawkins, it could have happened the other way. Now, look, besides yourself and possibly Mr. Baines, can you think of anyone else who might be able to supply information about the construction of the school? I don't know. Let me think. Somebody who'd, who'd have evidence in hand, possibly. Wait. Yes, I can think of someone. Who? The building inspector, the one who approved the building. 
Oh, well, that doesn't seem likely. If he passed that building, he must have been in with them. Well, what's his name? His name is Richard Hobb. Oh, I've known him for years. Oh, he is in with them in a way, but I know he'd get out of it if he could. He, he was a very decent man when I knew him well. I think he's still decent. Richard Hobb. All right, who else? Well, that's all I can think of. Well, that's a start. Well, what will you do? I'll ask you to take a plane to Denver, register at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, and wait until you hear from me. What? I want a statement from you before you go, but I want you to be safe. I'll get around to Hobb and Baines. All I want are sworn statements to the effect that Vickery built a bad school, that he violated insurance specifications. That'll start it rolling. Oh, when do you want the statement? Tonight, right here. All right. Let's get busy. It took an hour to get the statement. After that, I drove her to Grand Junction to catch a plane. Expense account item 10, dollar and a half, telegram, to a friend of mine in the private detective business in Denver. I asked him to meet Flory Hawkins' plane, see that she was safe and comfortable, and keep an eye on her during her stay in Denver. Then I drove back to Clinton. Item 11, 10 cents, another phone call. This one to David Baines. Yeah, dollar? Baines, Flory Hawkins made a statement about the school building and the fire. She's tired of being scared and shoved around. Now, how about you? You want a statement from me? Yes. Comparing your specifications with what you saw that actually went into the building. Will you make it out and take it before a notary? All right. If she can, I can. Then what? Then go down to Denver and wait to hear from me. I'll make the statement, but I won't leave town. You'll help me a lot if you do. Sorry. You'll be in danger here. I feel brave. If you're going to play it so broad, I'll do it too. I took his statement directly to the post office and mailed it to myself at the Northern Hotel. Expense account item 12, 40 cents, phone calls. I telephoned Sheriff Doherty, Fire Chief Hanley, and County Attorney Contractor Roy Vickery and told them that I had a sworn statement regarding building irregularities. Sheriff Doherty snorted and hung up. Chief Hanley yawned and told me not to bother him. And Roy Vickery just laughed. About 8 o'clock that night, I was at the home of Building Inspector Richard Hobb, a nice home in a nice part of town. The woman standing in the doorway was tall and blonde, holding a drink and smoking a cigarette. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Richard Hobb. I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm Lucille Hobb. He isn't home right now. But you can come in and wait for him and talk to me. I'm not bad company. Would a drink help? Help what? Whatever's wrong with you. You look tired, Mr. Dollar. It might, but uh, I'd rather not. I just came by to talk to your husband. You said that. What do you want to talk to him about? Business. This time of night? Let's stop talking about him. What do you say? Uh, look, uh, you, uh, you probably missed your dinner tonight, and you've been getting all of your nourishment out of a bottle, so I'll come back <laughs> you're later. You're afraid and... Dick will walk in. No, 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 I'm not afraid of that, Mrs. Hobb. He's already walked out, and you're feeling sorry for yourself. What? Well, a man, if he lives in a place, has a, an ashtray or a picture or yesterday's sports section lying around the front room... I don't see anything like that in this room. If I walked over to that closet, ten to one, I wouldn't find any of his clothes. And if I tried the drawers, I'll lay odds there wouldn't be a shirt around either. When did he leave? You're crazy. When did he leave? Yesterday. After the fire? During the fire. Where did he go? I don't know. Did he go alone? I don't know. Did Vickery tell him to get out of town? No. I'll ask that again. Did Vickery tell your husband to get out of town? I don't know. You said no the first time I asked. Vickery, a pal of your husband's? Well, they know each other, naturally. Look, Mrs. Hobb, I don't know how much you've had to drink, but if I'm reading your eyes right, you're scared. You're scared about what's happened here and what could happen here. And you know your husband's involved. Mrs. Hobb, I want your husband to help me. If he helps me, I can help this town get rid of people like Vickery and Doherty and Hanley. If you see him, if he contacts you, tell him that. Tell him I won't let anything happen to him. Tell him I have statements from two people already, and they're being protected. I'll protect your husband. You got all that? I don't know what you're talking about. Good night, Mrs. Hobb. I left her standing in the middle of the living room, drink in hand, staring vacantly at... I don't know what. Outside in the crisp mountain air, I took stock of the situation. 
Richard Hobb, building inspector, who had passed the school building, would be the most important witness I could find to make a statement. The others, from Flory Hawkins and David Baines, would help. But Hobbs' information would be essential to an investigation. I was just clinging to my rented car when a sleek, dark limousine pulled up, and Roy Vickery leaned out the window. Come here. Why not? Pretty cold weather to be out so late at night. Yeah, but then I've got a lot to do. Uh, you've been in to see Mr. Hobb? Yeah. How's Richard these days? I wouldn't know. I only spoke to Mrs. Hobb. I see. Lovely girl, isn't she? Well, she's a little sad right now. Her husband's missing. He left town during the fire yesterday. Do tell. Yeah, I have a feeling he might have been ordered out of town. Sooner or later, people would be asking the building inspector embarrassing questions about their school. Uh-huh. Were, uh, were you going to ask him some, some embarrassing questions, that is? Yeah, yeah, sure I was. I was going to ask him why he passed it. I was going to ask him how much he was paid to pass it. I was going to ask who paid him to pass it. And then I was going to ask him to make a statement. I, I figured you might have had something like that in mind. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Mr. Vickery. I hope I see you real soon in jail. A dollar. What? I know you're trying to earn your money and you're working very hard. But I'd stop it if I were you. I, I admire a man like you, someone who calls a... A spade, a spade. Or a liar, a liar. Or a liar, a liar. But dollar, it, it just won't do you any good here in Clinton. Is it? Tell you what. You worry about your problems and I'll worry about mine. Have it your way. Ready with your call to New York, Mr. Dollar? Right. Go ahead, please. Hi, Johnny. Hello, Al. Hey, look, Al, it's a mess here. I've made a little headway. I mean, I'll have a couple of statements coming in, but no concrete evidence yet. Well, what do you think? The school building was a fix or something or other. Money somewhere. I haven't been able to find out. The town sewed up tight, civically and politically. I can't expect any help from the law or the fire department here. They're in it, too. Oh, that kind of thing, huh? Afraid so. I need help. We'll be there in 24 hours. If they want to play it that way, we'll play it that way. <laughs> Twenty minutes after I hung up the phone and was in bed, I found out how much of a mess it really was. That's when my hotel door opened and a man lurched across the room toward me. Dollar, I, I've got to tell you, I wanted to get to you yesterday. He stood in front of me, swaying back and forth, his hands clutching the front of his coat. He fell before I could get to him. Three bullet holes formed a neat trio across where his tie pin should have been. I ran my fingers through his coat, pulled out his wallet. The license read, Richard Hobb, age 39, occupation, building inspector. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the town of Clinton begins to fall apart. And it takes a lot of work to pick up the pieces. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.